For this screencast, we're going to use the factoring skills we learned in Chapter 5 to simplify fractions. And then in the remaining uh, lessons in this chapter, we're going to be adding fractions, subtracting fractions, multiplying and dividing fractions, and these fractions are all going to have algebraic expressions that are going to have variables. So we're going to use our factoring skills here to simplify this particular problem here. We're going to factor the numerator, and so I'm going to remove a greatest common factor of 5, and so I'm left with a plus 2, and then here I'm going to remove also a greatest common factor of 5, and I'm left with a plus b. So notice we have a 5 in the numerator and a 5 in the denominator, and we know that a number divided by itself is 1. So we can divide a common factor of 5 out of both the numer numerator and the denominator, and we're left then with a plus 2 over a plus b. Notice that we canceled a common factor, right? We're canceling items that are being multiplied by other items, so we're canceling common factors. We cannot cancel these a's, so be aware of that. We can only cancel common factors. All right, let's take a look over here at this one. Um, you may recognize that the numerator is a difference of squares, so we're going to have x minus 4 times x plus 4, and in the denominator we have 3x plus 1 multiplied by 4 plus x, and you might think that the numerator and denominator have no common factors. Here, over here, it was very easy to see the common factor was 5. You might think over here there are no common factors. However, if we take a number and add 4, we get the same result as taking 4 and adding a number. So these are actually common factors. So we can divide that out of both the numerator and denominator, cancel those out, and we'd be left with x minus 4 over 3x plus 1. Let's take a look at some other examples. Uh, oh, this one's much more challenging. Um, one of the things we might want to do here is, is choose which we want to factor first, which one we think is easier to factor first, whether it's the numerator or denominator, and use the factors in the numerator uh, or denominator to help us figure out the other factors. I'll show you how this goes. Let's take a look at the numerator first. I know the factors of 2 are 2 and 1, so we're going to have a 2x and a 1x. And then the factors of 3 are 3 and 1. I'm going to try a 3 here and a 1 here. Um, we'd have a, a 3x and we'd have a 2x and I want those to differ, since there's a minus sign here, I want those to differ by 1x. I need it to be a positive 1x, so I'd want the negative to go here and the positive to go here. So we're going to have a plus 3 and a minus 1 like that. Let's erase my uh, little notes here to myself. So that's how the numerator factors. Let's factor now the denominator. The denominator has factors, uh, the 2 has a factor of 2 and 1, so we're going to have a 2 and a 1. And I know x times x gives me x squared. Since this is a negative x squared, I know I need a positive and a negative. Um, let's try a negative here and a positive here. Let's just double check to make sure our middle term does give us a negative 1x. So this would be a negative 2x, and this would be a positive 1x, and those together do add to a negative x, so that looks good. So obviously 2x plus 3 and 2 plus x are not the same factor. And x minus 1 and 1 minus x aren't really the same factor either. These are opposites. Let's think about this a second. If I had 3 minus 5, over 5 minus 3, I'd have negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. Or if I had 8 minus 6 over 6 minus 8, I'd have, negative, I'd have 2 over negative 2, which is negative 1. Or if I had uh, 12 minus 8 over 8 minus 12, I'd have 4 over negative 4, which is negative 1. Notice that the numerator and denominator here have the same numbers, they're just the subtractions in the reverse order. And so the result always ends up being a negative 1. So we can actually cancel these, and we have to leave a negative 1 behind here, because a number divided by its opposite, that's essentially what we have going on here, a number divided by its opposite, number divided by its opposite is negative 1. So our final answer for this one is 
negative 1 times 2x plus 3, the quantity 2x plus 3, over 2 plus x. And I'm just leaving the parentheses in the denominator here for emphasis. If you wanted to distribute the negative across the 2x plus 3 in the numerator and change the signs in the numerator there to be a negative 2x minus 3, that's perfectly fine. All right, let's take a look at another example. This one's a little easier. I think you can see that there's 4s here. Let's remove the greatest common factor of 4. Then we'd have p minus q and a 4 in the denominator. And a 4 divided by 4 is simply 1. So our final answer for this one is simply p minus q. Um, I would not recommend canceling here because you might um, accidentally not cancel the 4s. For example, if you do this, you might think you're done and you would have forgotten that 4. <coughs> also cancels with the 4 in the denominator, it's better to factor. Let's take a look at one last example here. I believe this is our last example. Oh, no, we have two more examples. Let's take a look at this one. Um, notice in the numerator, everything is multiplied. There's no terms. Just a, It's just a monomial. Whereas in the denominator, we have a binomial, two terms. We can factor out an A and a B. And if I remove an A from this A squared, I'd be left with an A. And I've removed the B. And then I remove a B from the B squared, and I remove the A. We'd be left with an A minus B here. And now I take a look and realize, well, in the numerator, A squared is really A times A, and B squared is really B times B. In the denominator, we have an A times B times A minus B. So a factor of A can be canceled from the numerator with a factor of A from the denominator, and a factor of B from the numerator can be canceled with a factor of B from the denominator. So that leaves us with A times B in the numerator and A minus B in the denominator. All right, let's take a look at one last example here. Here, um, you might think we can cancel this 2x with this 2x, but we cannot do that because of the plus sign here. We need to cancel factors, and we've got addition going on here. Um, let me take a brief detour here to explain why what I just said isn't true. Um, when we cancel common factors, we're basically reducing the fraction to something that it's equal to. Um, let's say we have uh, 4 plus 2 over 2. Okay, You all agree that this is the same as 6 over 2 or 3. Well, if I do some canceling, when I cancel, I should get something that it is equivalent to 3 once I'm done. And so let's say some of you think that you can cancel these 2's, and you do this. Well, then you'd have 4 plus 1 over 1, which is 5 over 1. If this was a, a legal maneuver, um, I should end up with the same answer that I did up here, which obviously I didn't. 3 is not the same as, as 5 over 1. 3 is not the same as 5. So this is not a legal, uh, this bottom right here, is not a legal maneuver algebraically. Okay, we can only cancel common factors. We cannot cancel common, um, cancel terms. Um, if you wanted to factor, you could uh, factor out the 2, and you'd be left with this. And notice, then we can cancel our factors of 2, and then we're left with 2 plus 1, which is 3. So we could do it that way. So that's how we're going to approach this problem here. We're going to factor out a greatest common factor of x, and I'd be left with 2x plus 1. Don't forget, we have to have that 1 since we had an x here. Remember, you can always check this by multiplying. x times 2x gives us 2x squared, and x times 1 gives us x. And then we have a common factor of x that can be canceled. So our final answer for this problem is 2x plus 1 over 2. So ideally, we just want to factor the numerator, factor the denominator, and cancel out any common factors from the numerator and denominator to reduce the fractions. Um, please don't forget to do the survey questions at tinyurl. Thanks.